Welcome back. We continue our fascinating conversation on how over 3,000 varieties of apples are whittled down to just a half dozen or so at the grocery store. Tom Burford tells us more. Taste is subjective. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a, a spectrum they, uh, of taste. They either like tart or they like sweet. Right. Some people are fortunate they like them all. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of the market apples now are, are trendy. They go toward, they went from very sweet as reflected by the red delicious, which is losing its f uh, favor in the market, to very tart, which you see varieties like Gold Rush now, or in some of them like Rhode Island Greening from the past that are, you know, quite tart but delicious. You were telling me earlier that apples weren't even in the U.S. in the past, right? Indeed. Uh, the apple, there were no apples in America except two very insignificant crab apples, uh, Mollus augustifolia and Mollus coronaria. And they were not even used by Native Americans except in a very limited way for food. And the apple was brought to America. As a matter of fact, it came, the first bags of apple seeds came to America, to Jamestown to the, in 1607. And these, the orchards were planted not for the, uh, for the fruit, for the eating, but to make cider because so many people were being sickened by the water. Oh. And the water was of great concern. Earlier there was an, uh, an effort to introduce the grape with disastrous results. And then the British and Northern Europeans began to colonize the, uh, and they brought their tradition of cider with them. That's so interesting. Now let's get back to the workshop itself. What do folks need to bring? What, do, what can they expect from the workshop? They need to bring a pair of hand clippers. Okay. Everything else will be provided. We are going to provide the, the stock we're going to, that you're going to graft to, and we're going to provide, this is known as Zion wood. Mm -hmm. I just went by behind us here and cut this piece off of, of a tree. And what we will do will be take two buds off of this, do, as the British call it, a carpentry. Do some carpentry on it, and then we will attach it to a root system, and you have an apple tree. It is very exciting. I particularly note when people do their first graft, I see light bulbs over the heads of, of the whole audience, you know. Oh, so I have made an apple tree. And then uh, you plant it out in a nursery row, and in one year from the time we graft on March the 10th until say Thanksgiving, that tree will have grown five feet. Wow. It is ready to plant in your orchard and to grow. So, and you then wait four years and get your first crop. Wax free, right? Yes, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> no wax. <laughs> yeah, but it is, uh, it is a, a great adventure for, uh, for, and I particularly would, insist that parents bring, if they have a child, say 12 years and older, to bring the children. Mm -hmm. Because one of the real tongue wagons I got once was uh, a workshop I'd done in Charlottesville. I think it was at Monticello, and this octogenarian, he was probably mid-80s, he came in and he said, I, wa I want to learn to graft. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after the workshop he did beautifully. He had a very sharp knife, which is required. And he uh, came up and he wagged his finger at me and he said, I was about in my 60s then at least. Uh -huh. And he, wagged, he said, young man, <laughs> how dare you not have this 50 years ago uh -huh. when I could have enjoyed it all of these years. So I particularly am delighted when say a 12 year, I learned to graft when I was seven. Mm -hmm. And my father put me into child labor because, <laughs> because we had a nursery and uh, 
the orchard grafting in pollinators and but the uh, children tend to really uh you know it enriches them and this is hugely popular. If you would like to sign up for an apple tree grafting workshop, it's going on Saturday, March 10th. There's two different sessions, 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. And you can register by calling 434-455-4411. And we'll be right back.